Hello world and welcome to this edition of Tech on Fire with Blaze. I'm Blaze Stewart, architect at Winelect. Today we're going to be looking at console as a service mesh on Azure Kubernetes services. So today we're going to be looking at console and how it is implemented as a service mesh on Kubernetes. Now console originally was a key value stored. It was intended to provide service discovery as well as the ability to do things like caching in a key value store type configuration on a environment that had microservice architecture implemented. But as the service mesh concept caught on, Console was extended to have a service mesh like concept added on to what console already provides out of the box for doing things for key value uh, stores. So the service mesh implementation on console is probably a little less, little less mature than other ones, say like Istio or Linkerd, but it does provide that same kind of functionality. So let's go review that functionality and what a service mesh looks like. So when we look at a service mesh architecture, they all kind of look very similar to one another and console is no exception there. They have a data plane and in this case, console does have a data plane and it has the console uh, daemon running as part of the service mesh that implements providing that key value store as well as console connect, which is the part that provides all of the networking and service discovery that are part of the control plane. Then you have the data plane and this is where your applications actually run. And the data plane will have all of your applications and, and those will be wrapped up in a pod with a sidecar proxy that gets injected into the pod whenever that pod is created, whenever you go to create that using a manifest file or a Helm chart. Now, once that pod is created, now it can interact with the network and the proxy is actually what does all of the telemetry in and out of the applications. And it also provides that secure proxy back into the application. So it is actually what something get, that gets hit by the external users or the uh, administrator whatever it might be. So you might have a console admin and they interact with that, that proxy by way of the data plane and that administration can look at the data plane and look at the actual consoles uh, values that are in the console key value store as well as the services that are available to a console. And we'll look at that in just a moment. And then you also have end users and end users are interacting with those uh, pods by way of that proxy uh, coming in from an external network through a service or an ingress or an ingress that's in front of a service. And then the Proxy is also going to report telemetry back to some kind of logging service that is a part of the implementation, whatever that logging service might be. So I have before me a manifest file that is for an ingress controller and a bunch of apps that I've already used in a couple of other demos. And I'm not going to go through the details of this. I'm just going to look at the annotations that I'm applying to this. And we've seen a similar uh, annotation that we applied when we looked at Linkerd. And this one just simply tells console to actually inject the uh, sidecar proxy into the pod when it's created. So this will allow me to have that sidecar proxy. So we'll see two uh, containers per pod whenever we go to deploy this deployment. And so this is very easy to deploy. And all of my pod definitions have that. Uh, as well on the annotation. So you can see they're all here. So let's go over to the command line and actually deploy this guy and then wait for it to come up. So to deploy that ingress controller, as well as all of the services and pods that go with it, let's go ahead and just run a kube CTL command here. And um, to do this, I simply do a, uh, a apply or create whichever one works. And then I can do ingress.yaml and that will create those services and pods for me. So I can do kubectl uh, get services um, or get service. And uh, that will show me all the services that I have defined. So I have one for uh, my commander keen pod and then uh, two different node apps that are exposed to services. And then I can do a get pods to show the pods in their state. Um, so they're currently coming up. So I have the commander keen is in an init state, the node apps in an init state, and the final uh, node apps are coming up. So now they're all running. Uh, let's go ahead and get the ingress and let's see if I have an IP address and then we can uh, look at that. So there's my HTTP ingress. So I can grab that and then I can come over here and uh, let's open up a new window and do an HTTP, uh, P, uh, HTTPS into this guy. And let's do app one. 
Um, and this is going to pull up my app one. So you see, I have something there. Let's get some traffic going there too. Um, I can just refresh that a bunch of times and, and that's, uh, and if I go to the root there, you can see that I have that up and running. So I have my application up and running. It's just a simple HTTP application that returns some information about the pod that I am running here. So if I wanted to see these actually in console, I can pull up the console UI. Now the console UI is not nearly as sophisticated as the one that we saw with Linkerd where you can do a lot of tools. It just shows some basic information. So uh, to do that, I first need to get a port forward going and the port forward will will then create a local port forward from my local host here into my console UI right here. Uh, and it's going to port, uh, do a local uh, 8082 port uh, 80 into the UI there. So let's go ahead and pull that up in a browser. So let's get a new tab here. Let's do HTTP colon slash slash local host. And let's go uh, colon 8080 slash UI. And this is going to load the console GUI. And this right here, it gives you the ability to get some information about your pods and your services. So if I drill down into maybe um, this node app here, I can see the pods that it's running and it'll give me some information about the, the pod that it's using there. Um, again, there's not really much that it shows and just some basic information. It'll show you some nodes, uh, information about the, the, the state of your nodes. You can come down here and look at the uh, health of your nodes. You can get information about the uh, containers and pods that are running on that. Uh, and then you can come over here, look at the some telemetry out of that, lock sessions and metadata. But by and large, it's not really showing you much. Uh, it's just mostly informational type stuff. And if I go back to another node, I can look at that. This this node here, look at the services, not as many here. But you, you, you can see here that I have uh, things running here. Now, this is where I can manage the key value store if I wanted to create key value stores and consoles. I can also do some security things. I'm not going to demo this, but you can create ACLs for your console cluster, as well as to create intentions, which are sort of like network policies, uh, which allow you to create a network policy between two different services. And that will allow you to uh, have an endpoint available to one service to another. But again, I'm not going to look at this today, but this is just the what it that gives you in the UI. So console as a service mesh gives you the basic functionality, but it doesn't, and it gives you some security features. While Linker didn't have as much security, it, uh, it did have a lot more in terms of uh, availability for doing traces and uh, fleshing out things and looking at uh, telemetry going through the actual service mesh and uh, giving you some better logging and real-time analytics with uh, Grafana. And this doesn't really give you as much of that, uh, but all in all, it is a, it is one attempt at doing a service mesh. And this one is likely to mature as well. I did find this one to be a little heavier than Linkerd uh, in my explorations of this particular one. Uh, given that though, I um, am more likely to use Linkerd in my use cases. That doesn't mean you couldn't use this one if you had a use case for console. So all in all, it's a very useful project. Uh, looking forward to doing Istio next time we look at another service mesh on Azure Kubernetes services. If you like this content, please consider visiting us online at www.wintelect.com and there you can find about services that Wintelect offers, including training and consulting services. Also, please consider subscribing to this channel by clicking on the subscribe button and clicking the bell icon to get notifications when new content becomes available and also comment down below. You can also follow me on Twitter at the one mule and also follow Winelect on Twitter at Winelect now or at Winelect. We are constantly posting things about Azure related technologies and things related to software development. You can also reach us by email at consulting at Until next time, thank you.